What up, world? It's your boy, Mark Walter War, Super Fact Show, Super Facts Network. Today we got on the heels of the release of his Outstanding, outstanding Remedy meets Wu-Tang. Remedy, how you doing today, brother? Peace, brother. Thank you. I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. No, man, Gratitude. No doubt. Gratitude. Yes, sir. Shit. Th th thank you for uh, joining us and, and, and thanks for, I mean, all, all, all the music over the years. Um, before we even get into, into the album, uh, you want you want to hear the story of the first time I ever heard your music? Yeah, of course. Hell yeah. All right. So I grew up in like a mostly black neighborhood in, in Maryland. And then I went to uh, jail for selling drugs in a mostly white area in Virginia. And when I came, when I came out, I was uh, I had to live in Virginia, being from the mostly black neighborhood during the crack era, era anything that wasn't weed was basically considered crack. So like if you was doing mushrooms, you were doing crack, you know, <laughs> you, you feel me? So, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I was pretty close minded into uh, my, 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 my dibbling and dabbling until I was, you know, on probation and I'm in Virginia. And so, you know, a motherfucker still don't want to be sober and I had the opportunity to do some mushrooms, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And the first time I ever did mushrooms right around the time the shit was kicking in, my, well, I don't know if homeboy want me to shout his name out, but but my man my man started playing education, mm. and he played okay. it like 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 over and over, <laughs> and then like 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 I, I can say it was peaking because the shit lasted for hours, and you know we then did, went and did other shit like giggle through Seven yeah. Eleven and things of that nature, but at one at one point, uh, particularly your first verse and the RZA verse started becoming like real cinematic to me, mm. and so, uh, you know. As soon as uh, I saw the Remedy meets Wu Tang, that shit made it, immediately made me think of mushrooms. So if nothing else, <laughs> for, the, for the rest of my life, I associate you with uh, psilocybin. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, man. Oh, no, it, <laughs> it, 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 you had a good trip that day. Yeah, it was a beautiful thing. I, I don't think you can really have a bad trip off mushrooms. I mean, I think, I think you eat too much and get sick or some shit. But you know, I'm I'm, I'm caught. Uh, unlike the rest of my life, I was I was always cautious with my drug use. Okay. You know, no doubt. Yeah. I figure you can always do more, but you can't do less. You know, what everything I'm in moderation. Yeah, right. So it's funny. We were actually supposed to do a video for that education song, but it just never came to fruition, man. We just didn't get it done. Damn, that 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 that, that would have been ill. Um, you know, yeah, I'm especially not, around. Good. I was I was gonna say, you know, not, it, it's been more frequent now, but actually, you know, I don't know, know cleared wise, but uh, clearance wise, you know, I ain't heard too many people get a uh, Pink Floyd sample, so. Well, I don't know how I got it either. Harry Fox, they just granted me like an interpolation right or something like that. But yo, I was about to put the, a remix of that same record on the new album and the lawyer told me, no, they only granted you an interpolation. You did something different. I don't know how you got away with it either, but if you put that on here, they're going to get the Maurice to come get you. So I just left it off there. Yeah, those probably ain't the problems you want in this world, right? Yeah, I'm better off for that. Sounds, I'm glad that was a good move anyway, man. I, it's good that there's all like new music on there. You know, to uh, further the story, like like some years later, uh, an another time that we was doing mushrooms and uh, it was a little bit acid too. But I I've always been scared mm -hmm. of doing acid. I don't fuck with bad, the, the the concept of a bad trip. Some cats wanted to listen to Pink Floyd, and uh, they had this was back in like when uh, it was like Sirius and Pandora more and Napster and shit like that. And, and instead of Pink Floyd, I I played Education a few times, and they was all like, oh. And then uh, you know, I, I let, him, let him hear the uh the Killer Bees compilation and shit. Uh huh. Okay. And, yes, sir. And and they was definitely digging that shit. Like uh, you know, Wu Tang beats and then the shit and then the the topics go well with uh psychedelics. <laughs> yeah, you are probably right. It's probably the same feeling, probably mutual all around the world, basically. Probably. Oh yeah, psychedelics yeah. Psychedelics for Wu Tang. Yeah. Have you have you toured around the world? Yeah, I've been around the world a few times. Thank so, God. So you got to feel that uh, that that Wu Tang love in Europe because that, 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 oh, shit, that yeah. shit is like no other. It blows away the the states. Hell yeah, man. Talking about uh, re releasing shit. I bet you if you if you I don't know if you own the masters or or even your uh, your album that turned into a mixtape from two thousand ten. I bet yeah, you I don't know all my shit. Yes, I, I bet if you pressed up you know like five hundred to a thousand of those vinyl. I bet you they go over there in, in Europe like that. They love collecting that Wu Tang stuff. You mean because of the new album, the old ones will go? Yeah, e even without that, like, uh, I looked up some of your stuff on Discogs, and it's, like, hell of expensive. And, and it, I don't even, bro, I don't even know. I never even know. But that's good to know. <laughs> I, I, well, th th there's this European market, and, and I'm pretty sure most of these cats just cop these records, and they never open them. 
for, wow. for, for collecting them. And they really like Dipset. They really like uh, the Memphis era at the beginning of Three Six Mafia and artists associated mm-hmm. with like Al Capone and shit like that. And they love Wu Tang, anything affiliated with Wu Tang. And like, hmm. you could sell a thousand vinyls, like, like, I'm talking about probably like at 50, $50 a WAP, like that to the European wow. market. I mean, just like That's Switzerland dope. alone, like, I guarantee those shits would be gone in less than two months. And something <laughs> like Remedy meets Wu Tang, man, if you couldn't sell like 50,000 of those in Europe in a year, man, I, I, I got to call Rough Nation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris Swartz, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The Fuji. Yeah, that's what I think, all, he, all I think he's doing the vinyl for me. Man, that, 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 that'd that be an outstanding move. Because, you know, like, as you can see behind me, I collect this shit. So a lot of times, the only time it becomes available, you got, you, you know, on Discogs, you can put, like, a want list. So you get, like, an email when something becomes available. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm a huge Dipset fan. And some of the rare, like, uh, like let's say, like, a Taliban or a Senate mixtape, you know, they'll be going for, like, 150 But But I'll be mm. seeing, like, a... Like like some of those Raekwon Vatican mixtapes, if you can find the ones that he had pressed up and gave out, man, those mm-hmm. just sell for like seven to nine hundred dollars and be gone like that. What are they on? A, a tape? Nah, nah. CD? They're, they're, what is they're, they're like a CD, but they would have been like the actual ones that he was passing out. They'll be like oh, notes okay, on, the actual ones. They'll, they'll be like notes on my, uh... They'll be like notes on how to authenticate it on the release page and all that. Mm, I, I gotta go through my yo. I got mad shit from years and years and stacked up in my garage and shit. So that, that 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 can lead us full circle because I kind of took us away from the point that we hear anyway. You know, you just released but, Remedy meets Wu Tang and talk yes. about stack of, stacks of shit. I mean, um, well, I, I ain't even gonna phrase it this way because that might be disparaging to someone else's project. But when you say Remedy meets Wu Tang, this is all like, you know, the main members, multiple appearances, everybody. You know, I'm not gonna say it, but you you, you can tell they're definitely putting effort into it. I hope so. Yes. You know the the that that I mean the album came out outstanding. Um, Thank you. No, you know I don't want to offend you or anything, but uh, you you as an MC sound more on par with them than you did when you know back around two thousand three, two thousand four. I would agree, man. I think I only got better with age. Uh, you know, on, on some of the some of the records, I would argue that you had either either the first or second best verse, and uh, and I'm talking you're about the first some guy. Of the you're the first guy to say it, man. Thanks. Because on some and some some of those records I'm talking about got people that uh you know went platinum or be on TRL and shit like that. So, so shout out to you. Um, yeah, no, thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, I'm with the let yeah, I got legends on records, man. I'm just grateful that thankful I could keep my hold my own even. Word, I I, I I I feel that. But like you know, you know, with anything that involves the Wu Tang, there's always a story, and, and you know, everybody always want to get into you know the, the fuck all that shit. I, I I guarantee though that, it, that you got an interesting story on how uh, some of these collabs came about. So I, I, out of all the songs on the album, which one, would, which which song would you say got the most interesting backstory to it? Um, they all definitely got stories, and I got a million stories besides those stories. But as far as the album, um, I would say it got to be Crazy Eight, the uh, the song that's kind of driving the record, and the, the one I got the video to. Uh, what you want the story? Oh, of course, of course. So uh, Crazy Eight. It started off. With, it started off with just a verse from Ghostface, eight bars, and it was on some totally different beat. wasn't wasn't even that good to beat to me. So uh, I took the acapella and I just started lining it up with like beat after beat after beat, and then after about two hundred beats. I ran into that one, and uh, I put it on there. And then next next was I went and got I went and got Rebel Inspector Deck, got him on there, and I remember you know started saying oh eight everyone's just gonna spin an eight because Ghost started off with eight so let's just keep keep it consistent and everyone does an eight um i think at first it was called eight by eight it was going to be called eight by eight and then i just crazy eight just made sense yeah so yeah actually so meth, and all that hell yeah i think meth might have been the last one to get on it meth meth was recording some stuff i got a studio in staten island right by the ferry and sometimes meth don't even want to be in his own studio or something or they were they were working on his studio so he, he was coming to my spot a lot so uh, meth came by and then once he blessed it I actually had two other dudes on there too. I think I had to take them off. I think Trife, Trife Diesel was on there. Hugh Hef was on there. Um, so yeah, Meth blessed it. I kind and then so and then um so I lined it up actually. I think I switched the verses. I was before I was after meth and then, then I was before and then I switched it to before meth, switched it up a couple times. And then one day we were in the studio and Meth said, Yo, Rem, 
when are we gonna shoot a video? I was like, a video for what? He was like, that shit I spit the eight bars on you uh, a couple weeks ago, or whatever. I said, well, word, you you would do that? He said, hell yeah, bro. You just let me know what's up. So that after he said that, you know, I, I got right to it. Tried to line everything up. My timing was right. And brother showed up, man. And everyone's like, damn, how'd you pull it off? How'd you pull it off, Rim? I can't believe you did it. But yeah, I got luck. Luck and timing is everything. And I just say, really, um, I love all my brothers for like sharing that and coming with coming for me. That was beautiful. And I would say it's really based on relationships. What's, your, uh, what's trust. your relationship with uh, Shaheem? I, I've always been uh, very interested in Shaheem's uh, music. My, my, myself, you know, I, I, I've spent uh, a, a lot of time incarcerated. And, and, and one of the places, you know, we had access to tapes and shit. And uh, I think it was called Man Child, but it was that first album that was on uh, RZA's mm -hmm. label. I, I had a mm -hmm. copy of that. And, you know, like the joint, it was like, God damn, woke up again. So, <laughs> so you know, I've always been like hella, part, plus the big L joint. You know, I've always Hell been yeah. hella partial to Shaheem. Uh, so what, how'd that come about? Was that, a, did he record that recently? Was that was that in the cut? Yeah, that was recorded recently. I actually just talked to Shah like two days ago. You know, I love Shah. That's my man. We're talking about too. I'm trying to maybe, you know, help him put together something that he can get, you know, something, make something really nice. Because, you know, everyone loves Shah. So I think... If he uses his own resources and reaches out to cats, I think he could almost get anybody on a track. I really believe that people love him that much. He got a a, a project with Jay Hood coming out. Shada does, right? Yeah. Yeah, when's that coming out? Uh, I, I guess they're in the process of putting it together. So Yeah, I think know, I've seen I, that somewhere, I, I, too. I, I, I don't know. They're, uh, you know. You got how, the uh, how, Give how Thanks joint, Little Vicious, right? The new song you got with Little Vicious, Give Thanks. Give Thanks. Live Life. Who, Jay Hood yeah. or Shaheen? No, uh, Little Vicious. Remember Little Vicious? Girl, I'm a freak. You know, that's Little Vicious, man. Nah, I might have been, man, bro. I, I, I did a lot of time, so I missed a lot of uh, radio, <laughs> radio type shit. Yeah, so Shaheen got a new single dropping on Christmas. He's been getting everybody to do plugs for it, man, but it sounds pretty good. Um, so that's what's so up. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely want to see him win. Yeah, I want to see him win too, man. I think he has a lot, you know, he could be Hollywood too. He can get into movies, man. He has the potential for everything. He has, yeah, he shot a good dude right there. And um, so when he came home, yeah, I met up with him a couple times. We hung, chilled. And then I told him I got the song with Ghost and I, I wanted you to get on it. He's like, no problem, Ram. I'll come anytime. He comes to the studio often, you know. We, we got a couple things going on. But yeah, he blessed the verse and uh, it, it, it turned out to be beautiful. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. You know, uh, I, I would definitely label him as underrated. I mean, no, th those in the know probably rate him properly, but uh, I'm sure he, he I, I don't feel he gets his proper credit for his place in hip hop. But uh, I you would know, agree. You know, speaking of underrated rappers, uh, I, I, I always felt that Street Life and Trife Diesel was underrated, like even amongst, like, you know, if because I ain't go front. The only reason I ever even started using the internet was to uh, get access to rap shit that I couldn't get in the DC area. And I go on a little like I used to like reading what people were saying shit because it'd be so different than what you'd see from in like the source and XXL and shit. And you know when they would talk about who could rap and who could on them little forums back in like you know the early color internet days and shit. You know I, when when they would talk about the the various Wu Tang affiliates. I mean your name would come up a lot. You, you know you definitely got a lot of love. But I felt like uh you know Street Life and Trife Diesel Diesel particularly. And then since then even in the blog era. You know, the way they evaluated mixtapes or albums, I felt like they just never got as much attention as they should have for just how lyrically nice they are. That, bro, I agree 100% with you. The Staten Island, unfortunately, yeah, there's a lot of dudes from Staten Island that are super nice. And just, you know, once the Wu came out, it's, you know, it's hard to live in those, the, the wings and shadows of these guys, especially when you're with them. It's like Trife Diesel, he was with the Theodore unit. And, you know, I don't know how much attention Theodore really got. Ghost had so much shit going on. Um, but Trife, yeah, Solo, he's actually working on something now that's pretty dope, too. I heard a couple of things. Um, Trife's dope lyricist, man. Street Life, too, he's another one, man. He's smooth, man. Street, street, got it. He just, he knows his street, you know, he knows what to do. You know, I, I, I being, being, you know, in, in from, from the D.C. area that, you know, I, I didn't live and went all over, but, you know, I, I noticed, like, down south, uh, a lot of cats would dismiss shit, shit if it was, you know, Wu Tang related because, like, to, like to be real with you, I heard many cats phrase it like, "I ain't trying to do all that thinking," and so I think a lot of times people didn't like listen to a lot of shit 
if they had actually just heard one, once or twice, you know, they probably would have ended up adding it to the collection. Just like, you know, to be fair, the, the other flip side of that coin is I feel a lot of people up top did the same with Southern music, that if they had just given it a listen, you know. 100%. Yeah, it goes both ways. You're 100% right. Yeah, some people, you know, Wu-Tang's not for everybody, man. Some people just want to party and party and bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and some people like the, you know, substance and content. You had to go, you had to listen to Wu if you were into any type of substance and content. And like you said, with the Down South thing, the people didn't want to hear those double speed beats and everybody rapping fast and all that shit. You know, everyone was trying to be that. Street credibility used to mean everything in, in the rap game and it's basically street credibility is turning into zero. They don't even want you to have credibility. Now, they'll be, they'll be scared of that. They'd much rather, you know, create you themselves or come with something and then they'll mold you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is funny how, like, everything got a narrative behind it. You know, it just used to be like, it's, it, you know, some shit come out. Motherfuckers fuck with it. Motherfuckers go on tour or whatever. And then some more shit go up, come out. Motherfuckers fuck with it. And then... At a certain point, motherfuckers don't fuck with it. And if you don't right. did, did enough good shit, you can keep going on tour and that pretty much be it. But, but <laughs> now everything got like a fucking like soap opera that go along with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty sad. But yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the world right now. I mean, if, uh, maybe that's really how it was. And, and just now we know everything. We probably just be knowing too much. Nah, like, like without, think, without, oh, go ahead. My, yeah, go ahead. No, so yeah. Do you think that there's, there's songs out now that people are going to care about 20 years from now, the hits that are like they're playing on the radio now and stuff like that, 20 years from now, are anyone going to talk about these songs? I mean, I couldn't begin to answer that because I have no idea what the fuck they're playing on the radio. But uh, <laughs> just look, you know, these, you hear the names and all that shit. Are these, but, are these but, guys like legends of 20 years from now, people will be reciting verses or anything like that? I don't, almost, I don't really almost, see. Almost definitely. Most definitely. Definitely? Um, yeah, I mean, certain people. Mm. Like, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, for one thing, like, when, when, you, when you were first coming in the rap game, you never would have thought that in 30 years, everybody would know the words to like, can't touch this and ice ice baby. But because of like, because mm. of those little YouTube videos where they do the dance alongs and the kids singing shit, you know, right. there ain't, there ain't right. a, a five year old on earth who don't know the words that can't touch this and ice ice baby. Uh, yeah, I think you're right about that. So, so, like, so you got to look at it from a whole different perspective because of like the way people consume music is differently. So, like, for mm. instance, a song like Hotline Bling or Bodak Yellow, that shit going to live forever just mm. because of mm -hmm. the level of exposure it, it, right. it, it obtained. It's almost like, it. like, regardless of the quality of music, it's almost like a metric. If you hit this level, that shit's going to live in 20 years just from the, 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 the residual echoes it will have through the, the webosphere, whatever the fucking proper word would be. But, but <laughs> right, right, right. Like, Mm -hmm. But uh, quality-wise, like, like, like did, did it change, like, you know, like, the shit that changed me when I was, like, mob deep when I first heard it? Is there shit uh -huh. that's gonna have that, that same feel for the people who heard it? That's debatable. But, you know, like, things that I didn't really get with, but I didn't have no animosity towards, like, the Juice World movement. It seems like they appreciated him like that. But then... So you think those people got the same feelings that you were getting when you listened to Mob Deep, basically? Yeah. If, if you watch that HBO documentary, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Okay. That's and, good. I'm and, glad and, to hear that, actually. You know, that's a good thing. And to be real to you, as someone who's turning 44, I think I needed to see that to realize that, you know, the the the, the, the when I had feelings like that for music, that wasn't the last time that, that people were gonna have feelings like that for music. And every generation right. is gonna have feelings like that for music. You know, you know that thing on Facebook memories? My memory was some shit I said 10 years ago. And uh and, and, like you can reshare it or whatever. And my shit was like things rappers will be saying in 10 years that rappers say today. And it was like, their shoes look funny. Their pants look funny. <laughs> their lyrics don't have any substance. I don't like their beats. So like, definitely. so yeah. Just, you hit those on the head. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, may, maybe it's just not shit that we'll hear that we'll, we'll, that we'll fuck with in 20 years. Although I, like I, I fuck with Kendrick Lamar like that. Um, mm. Even before Nipsey Hussle died, I, I started getting on some of those albums like that. I mean, to be real with you, I definitely like uh, Killer Mike like that, Run the Jewels. I mean, Remedy mm -hmm. meets Wu-Tang. Why, why can't that be something that people listen to in 20 years? Like, why yeah, can't there be so. a whole generation of 40-year-olds that, that know, know every fucking verse by heart in, in 25 years? I guess, yo, it's possible. I mean, you got six-figure monthly listens on Spotify. You know, when you release these singles, that they post on those artists' pages. Oh, that's big? That's good? 
Yeah, like you said, that's what got? six figure monthly listeners on Spotify. Is that right? According to the page, of, the artist page I followed on the Remini Meets Wu Tang. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's great. Yeah, like bro, brother, people, people are familiar with your back catalog and, and all that. Like, I was down there in, in uh, Northern Virginia, and boys was buying the uh, the both Remini solo albums that came out. Like, what was it, two thousand three, two thousand four? 2001, 2003, yeah. One oh, they, three, yeah. Yeah, there you go. I mean, nah, that's that's good to know, man. You know, sometimes it definitely don't be feeling like that. Oh, nah, they had <laughs> they had the green, man. Like, bro, like the, the one dude, my man who really liked your music, who put me down, the education, he had the uh, the, the green Wu-Tang album with the big yellow B on the front. You had a verse on that, Joan, I remember. The Swarm, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Swarm, yeah, yeah. Bro, I, I I know you done talk about Europe. I know you done performed in Virginia and got mad love down there, like in Tidewater, like yeah, no, Virginia, like that. That's a big Wu state. Yeah, definitely. Virginia loves Wu. Yeah, no, nah, oh yeah, they 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 definitely loved you there. North Carolina, and, all the yeah, definitely those states are great. Shit, you. I mean, I guess it'd be hard to tour you. How would you tour this record? If if, if it, I don't, man, honestly, I don't even think I don't think I would. I don't think I would, man. You could do like boutique boutique listening sessions that you host while you're selling the vinyl. Something like that. Yeah, something clever like that, maybe. Yeah, that's the way to do it because there's not enough money, really. I, they, would, they can't get me to go do shows. There's, there's not enough money out there the way the market is right now. And then to try to get all these dudes, you know, everybody's all over the place. Or maybe, maybe I, could, you know, I could do some shit with one or two cats or something, maybe. But yeah. right now they got the whoosh. There's about to be a, a big tour coming up or something. So, you know. I don't know how. I like what you said. Do the boutique thing, sell the vinyl, and uh, hang out. Yeah, and then you know maybe wrap a couple of your verses, tell the stories. You know, yeah, you, you, you know. Speaking of stories, I'm curious. Um, did, did you have? I, I guess I guess you came on the scene after uh, RZA had that basement flood. You you never heard any of those tapes, huh? No, I was in, uh, I was on Michelle Michelle Place. Uh, Oh, yeah, so did you, did you ever hear that 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 lost Inspector Deck album that's supposed to be like like one of the best of of, of all Man, the early I, ones? I, I can't say I heard that. No, I don't think I did. Um, but yeah, I was definitely in that same crib where all that magic happened and where the flood happened and everything. Yeah, I've been around a long time. Even the crib before that, when Rizzo lived with Ghost. Yeah, I, I was around then too on Morningstar. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. What 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 what, what, what was day to day life like? <laughs> um, there was a lot of mischievous, mischievous things going on. You know, everyone was kind of a lot, 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 lot of fun shit. Yeah, everyone was kind of hustling too. You know, no matter what, from what side of the island, you know, Staten Island's a real interesting place. We got the hood, we got mansions, and then we got middle class neighborhoods all over the place. And you know, there's all different sections and the families over there, and you know, everybody knows everybody about everything, and everyone's hustling. And back then, you know, it was like wow, wow. It was like cowboys, you know. Anything goes back then. Um, oh, bro, I, I remember the '90s, and from you know, yeah, you know, what what, 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 what everybody say, like, like to be DC and New York seem pretty comparable on the level of a I don't give a fuckness that that, that, that the youngsters have. Yeah, but I'm just, I just thank God that you know after oh, everything everybody did, you know, I'm here and I didn't have real no real problems, you know. Thank God, you know, all the stupid felonies we all got away with. <laughs> but hey, some of us ain't get away with all of them, but yeah, I'm, we, we, no, we, I understand, we, we, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. But, but you know, speaking of deck, and uh, you know, and, you know, let's add ghost face to this, you know, what well, I, I guess I should phrase this good for the listener. You, you've executive produced um, some of their projects, and, mm -hmm. and I'm curious, like, what what's the pressures of doing that, especially like if you if, if you executive produce a ghost face album, you know, he's comparing that to an executive album and executive produce on Def Jam, for instance. Actually, I think Ghost kind of sees some of those albums on a different level than all the stuff that, you know, that he's even, even himself has dropped. That not, like nothing to do with me, but, you know, those first three or four albums, he actually, you know, that's what he looks at as his albums. He knows he's got an amazing catalog, but I think he really, he really sees those albums because he don't really look back at a lot of his music after Ghost puts it out. You know, he's a very, very interesting guy. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. How about you? Which ones do you listen to? The, the like, if you if, if you were to advise him that he should listen to one more, like I like that uh that that R and B type Joan that he did and the uh poetry one. Got it. 
Yeah, so I would just say um, Ghostface Killers, <laughs> of course, because I'm biased to that. That was the one I executive produced. Um, but oh, see, uh, I, I just assume he could he would consider that one to be one. I think in this in his, I think he knows. You know, he knows. I think Ghost knows because he. We know we tried to get that sound from back then with that album. I mean, it, se it seemed like good. he spoke on it much more than than he did on some of the like let's say four or five releases ago. You know. Yeah, I mean, well, that was part of, you know, if we're going to do this together, we got to do it. We got to try to do it right. Or, you know, I don't want to do something and not tell nobody. You know, we got to do it right. Word. If I'm going to executive produce it, I, I start from the very beginning, bro. We go through 200 beats. We pick out what we think we should even present to Ghost. And then we let him, you know, he, he usually picks. He knows what to do. Ghost got it. You got the ear. Um, yeah, so I try to steer them in. Even with the pulpit, you know, you know, the pulpit with I got Conway and Ghost on it with Cat. Yeah, I played. I was trying to get that on Ghostface Killers album, and Ghost didn't jump on it. He was like, I, "I like it, but you know, let's hear someone else on it." And then I went and grabbed Conway. But uh, yeah, Freeway ended up being busy or something. We just never really—I mean, not Freeway, but West Side rather ended up do, doing something. He never jumped on the record, so that collabo thing we was trying to do didn't really work out. But um, yeah, so Ghost with the Beats. So yeah, um. I'll just pick the whole assortment of beats, let Ghost do his thing, and, um, you know, we go after the features. We were trying to get that Wu sound when we made Ghostface Killers, you know, that original, you know, that Wu sound. So that's any album I'm exactly producing. If it has something to do with the Wu, I'm trying to get that sound. And I don't want to try to make nothing that's, you know, out of the realm of, of their greatness and what, what really made them. Word. I mean, yeah, that, that the and, and then the challenge there is to, you know, also have it evolve. And, uh, you know, I, I listen to the ones that you executive produce, even all the way back. I don't know if you executive produce the one that you released. Um, when, I guess what, what, what did, did you have Capadonna on your label in 2003? Um, I guess you could say that my label put his album out. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. So your label did the release. But yeah, I went and listened to all of them. And it seemed like you did a, a great job of, uh, you know, like you said, capturing the Wu Tang sound, but you can definitely hear from that Capadonna to the Ghostface. Even your album would be, you know, in the same vein, capturing it, but 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 you know, as it evolved, like it doesn't sound sound dated or like you're chasing like Liquid Swords, for instance, you know. Right. I mean, I mean, okay. and and that can't be easy either, you know. Like you have to have a good ear to do that. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, I, I think I I could hear it, man. It don't take long. I could hear it until you know if it's right. I think you heard Chamber Number Nine, Inspector Dex, last one too. Chamber number nine. If, if it's one of the ones you executive produce, I just yeah, uh, I, did that. I, yep. I just I just added um all to a a, a, a cue on Spotify and listened to them all day. So uh, yeah, uh, oh, that's I, dope. I, I yeah. even did Dex uh, manifesto 2010. Me and Dex did that one together too. Yeah, see, that's what I was gonna say. There was two deck albums, so I don't know which one is which. To be honest with you, because I was I, I was doing I mean I was doing dishes and shit like that and doing housework and just letting it rock in my ears. I hear you, bro. <laughs> oh, 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 oh I, I take advantage of the streaming there. Like, like to me, that shit is great. Like having all, all that music on hand at any time. Like, 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 bro. I, I still got mad CD books, right? So I probably got like one of the remedy CDs still. But it, mm. it was it, by the time I, I by the time I found the CD, I would have forgot what song I wanted to listen to. <laughs> I got mad shit. Oh, I can't really even see it. I got mad shit over there too. I got freaking all types of stuff going on. Word. I mean, bro, I'm not even front. Sometimes I buy like, like, like I'll, I'll probably cop your vinyl and I've already heard your shit, right? But if I hadn't heard it, I, I nah, probably... Just give I, me your address and I'm going to send you a nice package of all that shit. Ghost, deck, everything. Oh, oh, oh damn, that's love. I appreciate yeah, that. Just some, tell me where to shoot the package. I got you, though. Oh, that shit. Thank you. Thank you. But what I was going to say is like, sometimes I cop these vinyls and then I, then like I feel guilty. I ain't listen to them. So then I stream them shits on Spotify. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, when you got the vinyl. Yeah, because I, mean, <laughs> right. I mean that that's that's just how shit uh shit evolved. So you know, um, I, I noticed that like you know, your Wikipedia page uh in, in particular, you know, seems to seems to stress the Jewish thing a lot. And uh, you know, I don't know if you ever wanted that to be so intrinsically tied with your artistic identity, but you definitely also never shied away from it. So uh, I, I'm curious, you know, there, there wasn't like a large Jewish community in D.C. So, so can you hit me to what it was like being Jewish in New York in the '90s, and like how different, how different that, that, how different that would be like from being perceived like, you know, like a quote unquote regular white person? Mm, well, that's a deep question. We could talk about that for hours. But first, let me tell you what, the, what I just seen about Wikipedia. You know, anyone could edit Wikipedia. Right. 
<laughs> so you gotta watch that one. Oh, oh but, that's uh, why that's why I phrase it as perceived as, you know. Right. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, because I know I didn't write that shit or no, but nobody probably that know really knows me wrote that. Who the hell knows what's going on? I I don't I gotta go read it now myself. <laughs> but, it, it, uh, basically they was all uh cats that took whoever did the shit t- took quotes from uh articles like one 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 thing about uh a song that you discussed about the Holocaust was taken from a Portsmouth newspaper, like like, like three paragraphs. And it was about you bringing attention to uh, Holocaust survivors and your family story. Oh, yeah, the whole Holocaust thing. That's a whole nother story, yeah. But being Jewish in Staten Island is a different story. Word. Yeah, I figure, <laughs> I I figure, I figure you done answered mad of the Holocaust question, so I wanted to get a different Yeah, not being Jewish on Staten Island was real interesting growing up, you know? It seemed like, um, first of all, you know, once they found out you were Jewish, you know, they make fun of your nose and shit like that. But, uh, you know... Little shit kids do make fun of each other and all that, you know, scrap about whatever. Um, yeah, it, 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 it ain't bother us as much back in the day, like, 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 like it began to these youngins now. Oh, now everybody's all like, yeah, everybody's real fragile now. I mean, you can't can't say anything, you can't do anything. <laughs> you can't Coach, even say you can't yell at players and shit, shit crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they want participation awards, you can't even yell. Yeah, it's just, it's just getting crazy now. I mean, the whole world's different. Yeah, so, so you know, when we, when we, because you know, I grew up in a, in a, mostly black area and you grew up in a, in a in a mixed area so when we say these things you know we ain't like even complaining because you know like to like because oh, like to my son when i be telling him about that shit he thinks it sounds like the worst thing in the world i'm like bro like like life was mad motherfucking fun right you know like yeah. going to the basketball court and all that shit like it always be a lot worse, everything man. hell yeah hell yeah I, I remember they saw a white man can't jump and they're like there's some bullies <laughs> you're yeah. yeah, right um white I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like i'm like that's tuesday man yeah what was the other one? Oh, the great white hope you know i was actually the wayne brothers called rizza and we sent them a few remedy songs for the great white hope soundtrack but i think they said they were too slow to tempo or something yeah they, they didn't use none of them shits but oh this shit was going on too. the album for man they, they didn't use it in the movie mm. what about white boys you seen that movie yeah, hell yeah. That shit, when, when homeboy go to Chicago and decide to sell crack, hell yeah, that shit is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. What was the kid's name who did that? Uh, Hawk, Greg, wait, uh... I don't, I don't know his real name, but in the movie one, his name, like, Skip or some shit, or Chip. I don't know. I know that shit was funny right. as fuck. Yeah, hey, bro, right you know, you know, you know, like, I live in Tampa now, right? And, and I ain't never, I ain't never used the N-word in my life, like, not rapping along with no song or nothing, right? No doubt. Uh-huh. And, 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 like, I live around mostly white cats, and, uh, man... Like like the 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 the, the kid, man, I sound all old and shit, but 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 like the ten to eighteen year olds, they all be calling each other the N word in front yeah. of black people, and nobody says nothing. Man, like you said, that must be the new thing, man. I don't know. That was, I would never do that. You know, I don't. You know, that that just goes against all the rules. I, mean, I, I remember like a punch came with that. Like 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 I heard a couple times like like a white dude might have strayed a little far from his territory and been like on the wrong basketball court. And, and thought that right. it was okay to say that shit. And, <laughs> right. And, and a punch immediately came with that. Yeah, that and the suck my, you know, that's when you get hit right off. Yeah, that's it. Those yeah. were the fouls, man. Yeah. I know, y'all, like, it's like there's a new era going on right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, guess they just, I don't know. It's crazy because in one minute, everybody's so fragile. But when it comes to that, nobody seems to give a shit. Were, but, you know, I, I took you all the way from what, what it's like growing up Jewish in New York in the 90s. Cause I, cause, cause I know it ain't all Woody Allen and Seinfeld and shit. <laughs> Hell no, um, being Jewish is man. Um, you know, I wasn't really, we weren't religious. My family, you know, we were more um, reformed, conservative. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't know. I, so I you got you, you 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 got at your Wikipedia page, bro. That shit make you sound like you like a like a, a Jewish a, a Jewish American spokesperson. Like that was like your cause. No, mm-hmm. that was the cause when Never Again came out. What happened was all these, you know, Never Again made it became like a Jewish anthem and, and it was like um all these Jewish organizations from around the world contacted me and wanted me to come bring Never Again and perform Never Again and speak. And I had this whole program basically. Um You must have learned a lot from that from that then. Oh hell yeah. I learned all I met great people, resources, man. That's what it's all about. Now you have to you know use your resources. Um and that, you know, never again made grown men cry. You know, I, I performed never again hundred millions of times or whatever, but you know, 70 year old men come up to me and just hug me and start crying, man. They, you know, I start crying and dudes, that's just shit is crazy. You know, the stories I heard about Holocaust victims, fan, all these people I've met, man, and everything. And it was really just about me doing my own research and finding out my, my great uncle, Boris and his family, you know, he was shot in his back, family taken to the camps. They were never seen again. 
and we were just out, you know, I said it was amazing. I just started seeking knowledge from the elders, the wise, wise people and Jews that been through a lot. And, you know, that's how Never Again came about. But yeah, pretty much after that, you know, of course the Jews are going to try to grab you and make it look, well, yeah, here's here, you know, this is what he's about. Of course, that actually probably affected my rap career, basically, you know, you can't, you know, it's not about being Jewish. You're not going to make it to the mainstream, uh, you know, I would, that's what, you know, that conflicted with, with making rap music, kind of. Nah, I, 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 I can dig it. I can dig it. Hey, right. hey, um, hey, to my knowledge, Eminem ain't never talked no shit about you, did he? Because it's, it's, nah. it's, it seemed like uh, for a minute there, he, he went out of his way to like uh, diss every white rapper that ever released something. Yeah, you noticed that. Yeah, I noticed he never said my shit either. And we were actually in, what was it? Two, what was that Rolling Stone the, with the pink cover and Lauren Hill? That was like our, both of our first intro into like the magazine world before, right before we both came out. It was about me, him, and Everlast. And white guys, white guys, pretty fly for a white guy. That's what the shit said. Oh, man. And, um, <laughs> Yo, that's a Rolling Stone. That's the cover. Yeah, that's a good story about, about white rappers that don't suck. That's what it said underneath that. And it was really about me, M, and Everlast, and all, a couple other cats. Um, but then I did the video, too, and I said on one of my joints, Donnie Aino must have been crazy, thinking that I'd walk in his office on some old Slim Shady. Love and respect broke fast with the Rifkins. Not commercial enough for Russell Simmons. You know, because that was really my story. When I met Russell Simmons, he told me, Remedy, I know everybody knows who you are, and that's great, and I see you got things going on, but I don't hear you on the radio. And, you know, I was just like, what? The guy that basically laid the path down for hip-hop just told me you don't hear me on the radio? <laughs> I was like, I thought hip-hop was the studio. Well, I don't know. I didn't even know. But, yeah, I understand it's a business and everything. You know how it is. But I mean, I mean, and to be fair, like, R R Russell Simmons' role in, in laying down the path for hip-hop is kind of greatly overrated. That's very possible. What was he, yeah. party promoter? Club promoter? What were they? Well, no, no. Nah, nah. what, 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 what I say is, like, it's more Rick Rubin. Like, you know you know what made Rick, oh, Rubin, what, what Rick Rubin made him leave was they was arguing over uh, Russell Simmons kept signing R&B acts. You know, that, like, right? That's what. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like, Orange Juice Jones, I saw you standing in the rain. Like, like uh -huh. that's that's only like like even remotely successful Def Jam R and B song, and and, wow. they, and they signed a gang of R and B artists. So so mm. yeah, and then you know, I didn't realize that that's very yeah yeah. And then like I mean I mean he had the end with Run DMC, but but name a hip a hip hop act he broke. Who Russell? Yeah. Well, it like, like you you, can, you, you, you can give name, him credit for the Def Jam. You give him credit for the, everything. No, on no, Def Jam. no, no. I'm talking about on Def Jam. Like I can name acts that Leo Cohen broke. I can name acts that Rick Rubin broke. Right. I'm I can't sure really... if you ask Russell. I'm sure if you ask Russell, though, he could probably name a few. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. But yeah, like, yeah. You, 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 all I'm saying is, like, you, you would think it'd be a little bit more. You know, but, I mean, actually, I don't even want to talk because you should never kick a man when he's down because he, he got quote. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. But he got quote. The Eminem thing. And I yeah. actually said, I know we had to, had to hear that video or hear the song. When I said Donny Ida must have been crazy. And even in the video, I had some little slim, shady dude. You know, I was probably just looking for a response. That was like 20 years ago, right? You know, you gotta you gotta poke you, poke poke each other and try to get responses. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Then, I mean, shit. Then you could be running around selling uh Remedy vs Eminem mixtapes. Probably could have sold 150,000 of them. Hmm. That, that's probably true. Yeah, but, yeah I don't know. I, 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 know, I know you could have. I, I had a bunch of deals and opportunities to to kind of like um go the major label route. And, it's kind of like what Rizzo's lawyer told me a long time ago. Remedy, you know too much. And a lot of labels and people, they're not going to mess with you because of that. Right. And then, you know, then they had, I had offers from Sony, I think, Koch, uh, Priority Records. Um, and I don't know. I, since I did that, probably, you know, Rizzo's right, though. If you want to make it into the books, you know, into the the that status, then you kind of have to sell your soul and sign that deal, or the first deal or whatever, and then see, you know, see if you can get there. But then you, but I don't know. You I just transitioned into the business real quick, you know. What's that? But then you transitioned in the, into also venturing into the business side real quick, which I think everybody should. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I said screw that, man. I'm gonna go independent. I ended up actually selling like a hundred thousand on my first album. I think that was yeah. You ended up like a hundred and something thousand. And that, and that was to... that was in those days when when you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's that seven dollars album wasn't all the way accurate, but that you know. Selling a hundred thousand independent might have gave you more money than a lot of cats who went platinum, you know, oh, on, hell on, yeah. on a major, you know. 
of course, trying to get it from the distributor, that's a whole nother challenge. But yeah, once you yeah, get that, I've heard, exactly. of, I've, got, I've heard you those know, stories the, the too. You know, two rules in rap music, uh, every artist hates the label and every label hates their distributor. That's, <laughs> yeah, I, that's the standard. I, 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 I always heard that when you deal with a, as an independent, when you deal with distributors, only money you'll ever get is what you get up front. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I haven't had that experience personally. I actually got money on the back end a couple of times, but um, I could see that happening, you know. Yeah. Or, or, or they say game. they use it as a lure to, to get you to release another project on. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You're not supposed to take that advance money if you don't have to. Yeah. But I mean, we. I, I mean, it's yeah. just a loan. Everything's a loan, man. Yeah. And they're getting it, they're getting it back. Yeah, and then some for sure. Hey, um, just out of curiosity, like, I mean, there, there ain't really no point to this. I just saw you did a bunch of songs with with JoJo Pellegrino, and uh, you know, I just wanted to get wanted to get him some attention because uh, I I remember there was like this Def Jam compilation, and, and he redid a joint over uh, the Rock Him thing, right? The Rock Him joint? Nah, the Jay Z joint, the cough up a lung. Where, oh, where, where I'm, I'm from. from. Yeah, yeah from. And, that's his and, anthem right there. And then since then, like I know, if, like maybe four or five years ago, he released some music and the shit was vicious. And uh, I want to say, yeah. was it was it was it one of them Violator compilations or maybe a Rough Rider album? He, Violator. He, he, yeah, he, like so. Point being, I just thought he was always dope. So, I, and then when I saw that you would work with him, them shits was vicious. And uh, yeah, the only Yo, point was I wanted to talk about how dope JoJo Pellegrino is for a second. And yeah, hell yeah, yo, Joe is an incredible lyricist, man. Yo, but he actually put out an album like like two, two, three months ago, I think. Yeah, really? man, for higher volume too. Oh shit, I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah, he got Ray, Ghost, Conway, um, Nems, um, what the hell else he got on there? RJ Payne, um, a bunch of cats, man. Yeah, the album's dope. Man, yo, Pe Pelly's amazing, uh, amazing writer. Yeah, man. He's what, what, Pelly, what, what did you think of me? What did you think of Mims personally, at, musically, at, as a musician? I, I don't think I really gave him enough of a chance yet. I just started really checking out a couple songs just recently. Um, but they, everybody said when they say Nims, then they say his merch. You know, that's always the next sentence. I want to hear his albums. But I, I never, I haven't really listened, man. You? Nah, I, I, I ain't give him the chance. Um, I thought, what, what's my man that made Pop Champagne? Ron Browse, the, the, the homeboy that produced Ether. Ron Browse, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think, I think, I think he's underrated as a musician. Like, like he gets, you know, dismissed as a one hit wonder, and I think he definitely got quite a few. But uh, uh, Ron Browse got some shit. He did some stuff for my man uh, Belly. Oh no, he's called Prayer now. He messes with Buster. I don't know if you ever seen him. Prayer. His the old name used to be Belly, but Ron Browse did. They had a whole album going like three years ago. This was banging, but I don't know what you know. Everybody went their own way or something. Ron yeah. Browse, he's talented though. He got some music, but but yeah, I mean, if if he doing a jump with uh with JoJo Pellegrino, then yeah, I, I I'll check that out. And if I like that, I'll go, I'll go listen to some memes. I'm I'm down to listen to anybody. Like you know when they say that shit, do you have a guilty pleasure? And I'm like, hell no. Nah, why the fuck would I have a guilty musical pleasure? Like if it's mm. some music that I like, what the fuck? Why in the fuck would I be guilty about it? You know, I don't like, know maybe if you like if you like Little Nas X, you might feel like you might feel a little guilty. I mean, I, <laughs> no, I'm just playing around with like, like, I remember that Amanda Perez song that was like, God sent me an angel or some shit back in the early 2000s, right? Dope song. I and, love that and, and, and like, I'm, I'm just coming home from prison. I all got like long hair and cornrows and shit. And I used to have the slide out grills and all that type shit. And my, Yo, it's crazy and, you said that song. My wife loves that song. Yo, that song right there. Yeah, but, but, but you know, right. motherfuckers will make fun of me for listening to that shit. And I'll be like, why? This shit is good as a motherfucker. Oh, hell yeah. Screw that, bro. Don't worry about them. Yeah, that's so true. I, I just ain't never heart, had a guilty... That's heartfelt, right? There. Yeah, I'll claim anything I listen to if I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you should, right? Yeah, like, I, I forgot what, what my... uh Like, well, I remember my, my older kids, that, that backyard again shit used to knock. I ain't go front. Like, it again. Yeah, and then my, my, my little dog listening to some shit. That shit go hard, too. But, you know... Mm -hmm. Not, not, Yo, now listen you, to that Pellegrino album. I bet you love that shit. Oh, I'm definitely too. I'm, I'm definitely yeah. going to Hitman for High Volume too. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I ain't finna forget. So on that Wu Tang meets Remedy, would you agree or disagree if I said that your strongest verse was Sparrow on Sparrow? <laughs> yeah, but I guess you must know hip hop, man, because that's actually my favorite song on the album. Uh, um, yeah, the Sparrow, bro. I love the Sparrow. I mean, and honestly, the Sparrow, my 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 baby was calculated risk until I made the Sparrow, and then the Sparrow kind of took over. But you know, the Sparrow is just—it's basically just dumbed down lyrics and just flows or whatever, just bugging out. Yeah, but yeah. Like, 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 like when cats used to, yeah, but, but, but I mean, dumbed down by like you know, there's no 
you know, straight up concept, but that's like just when cats is just showing how nice they are. You know what I mean? Right. Like that. Right. You know, yeah. like an old school cypher, like like everybody now thinks freestyling means like snapping on a motherfucker. But I remember when we used to, you know, sit outside and just, you know, you yeah, try cypher. to demonstrate how nice you are, you know? And then yeah, we, but it was actually When you cypher, lost that shit, the next motherfucker started rapping. Or the yeah, one that interrupted that motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Imagine what a cypher today would look like, man. I don't even know. You might just start cracking up if you watch the cypher of these modern day kids. Because when we were doing the cyphers, bro, you wouldn't even step in the cypher if you didn't have something real to say because... You were gonna catch one if you did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you get clowned the fuck out. That's for yeah. sure. And growing, especially messing with woo cats and everything. You know, it was intimidating, man. It was there was a lot of that going on. Do you do you remember the first time you 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 quote unquote stepped up in the cipher? Um, I don't think I remember specifically, but but there's been plenty of them. <laughs> but yeah, hell yeah, I remember. Um, what what what's one that you was in? It was like an uh, all star lineup. Oh, uh, we was probably they, they even had you, but like, damn, I can't believe I'm 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 rapping with these cats here. Those cyphers, yeah, it was also more like the upstairs and that in Riz's old house and shit like that. Um, no, oh, I remember cypher who we had Hellraiser. Oh, can you get in cypher with Hellraiser and kill a priest, bro? You better, you really better be ready for something. <laughs> you know, priest. I don't know if you're a fan of priest, but that dude right there. If, if, if artists got paid for their lyrics, he would be a billionaire. I, 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 I'm definitely a fan. I, I like that Four Horsemen jump. I like a couple of the solo albums. Um, I'm not gonna lie, he's a a, a committed listen. Mm. You know, like like you gotta kind of devote your attention to listen to Killer Priest. Yeah, no, I, he's, he's definitely not for everybody. But if you're a little like spiritual or um, you know, into into that mysticism and all that, you know, spirituality. Yeah, Priest is, you know, he goes deep. Yeah, like that, that that's the shit to make you got like you you're gonna have to think for real though. Like you and, and then you have to Google shit. Like a lot of them names he he'd be referencing go over my head. I gotta look it up to see what it is. Yo, means. and I've been there with him when he writes them, he pulls them right out of his head. He's incredible, man. Yo, so I got an album with Killer Priest. It's called The Holy of Holies. Um Is it out? All like no, it's not out yet. Oh, okay. We've been working on this since we went to Israel together in like 2005 or something. But uh it's all like sacred, holy music. It's like nothing to do with what's going on. No materialism, no whips, no chains, no bitches, no money, no ice, no, no. It's only about sacred, timeless, you know, revelations and shit like that. It's holy. When do you plan on releasing it? Honestly, now since we did the Remedy Meets Wu-Tang thing, I don't think I can come with that next. I think I got to come with part two to the Remedy Meets Wu-Tang first. So I've been working on that already. You know, I got some verses going. I got some beats stacked up. I'm trying to get on that fast while while we while we're running. You know, we're hot right now. We got to keep it going. I can dig it. Is Young Dirty Bastard gonna be on that on that one? You want to you want you want to hear that? You like him? I do. Yeah, I would get Dirt, Young Dirt on there for sure, man. I love Young Dirt. Yeah, I, mean, I should try to extend an arm to him. Yeah, get him on that. I like that idea. Off the top of my head, like he he might be the most talented in his own right quote unquote hip hop son I can think of. Well yeah they well I, I mean Chris, about, Chris, Chris Rivers Chris Rivers that, is strong. That's who I was gonna say. Yeah he's dope man that dude got some bars. Yeah. Um yeah right who else is out there? I mean I guess like TI son or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but yeah say less right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> all right so so you know, remedy meets Wu Tang too. Maybe the vinyl. Um, what what what's the time? What's the timetable that they can be looking for? Like I don't know, the next video, the next single, the next move, uh, tour, um, anything of that nature. Yeah, so I got like four videos, four or five videos left from the album. I got the Sparrow video about to drop. Um, okay, they gonna love that. To say the least, I got one for um, greatness, the killer be legacy with Trife Diesel and Solomon Childs. I got another one for calculated risk. And me and Ghost were talking the other day about doing one for Modern Day Miracle, the intro song. We might go, uh, yeah, we might do something for that. Man, you'd have to, that, that, that'd have to be visually compelling because those are some, uh, I mean, it's, I hate to be cliche, but cinematic lyrics, you know. I, I got to find another, I got to find another fucking word to use instead of cinematic, but like, you know, that shit is easy, <laughs> e e easy to fucking visualize, you know. Yeah, I agree. It's got to be, you got to be able to see it, man. Yeah, we're going to... And not, not, not necessarily no wild, like, expensive-ass shit, just some just some visually compelling-ass stimulating shit. Like, sometimes I feel like 
it, 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 it ain't the budget. It's what you do with it, especially like when it comes to like shoes and sets and shit like that. A hundred percent, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Using your resources, your mind, and you can make a, a 5,000 budget look like, you know, 500 if you do it right. Word. That's how I be Christmas shopping. These five dollar gifts I be giving people, they be swearing they cost like fifty or hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But now, nah, bro, like, shit. Thank you for your time. Um, before we get out of here, please, can you uh um share share your social medias and if you got any like merch website or anything you'd like people to check out? Um, yeah. So I guess uh, what's my my IG? I think's Remedy Woo. I think my Twitter is Remedy Ross. And, um. Check out ghostfacemusic.com, you know, get on that mailing list, you know, pushing that. Um, and that's it, man. Just for the love and the legacy. Keep making solid contributions to hip hop as long as I can, man. Oh, well, you, you definitely did your thing on Remedy Meets Wu Tang, man. Congratulations you, on, 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 on releasing this thing. I appreciate no that. It's a, it's a timeless piece of music. And like I said, thank you for your time, man. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, man. I appreciate everything. Thank you. No doubt, man. Well, you should. You, you take it light, brother. You yeah, likewise, man. Have a great holiday. You too. Enjoy. All right. Blessings. Peace. Yes, sir. Peace.